Hello and welcome back to the Paddle and Fin podcast. I'm Brian and today I am flying solo, you guys, but we have an epic guest. We have another, none other than Indiana James Macbeth from Jackson Adventures. I almost said Jackson Kayaks, so right. um, that's going to take a little bit of adjustment. I'm sure you're going through the same same kind of uh, struggle there. Uh, James is from Canada, so we want to talk a little bit about him, but then also uh, answer some of the questions that are out there about uh, the thought and the idea behind Jackson Adventures and kind of where, where the direction of Jackson is going and, uh, you know, kind of get all those questions answered for those out there. Um, first, we want to dig into James. I think James oh. is a guy that, uh, you know, you hear your name quite a bit, but I think uh, guys don't necessarily know a ton about you just because you kind of play that role behind the scenes at Jackson a little bit. I mean, sometimes you're in the forefront. Um, I'm, always, I'm always the looks, looks and, and the <laughs> so it's a kind of combination. It's hard to capture in one spot, you know. Well, you know, that's what Jay Randall always claims here on the podcast is that he's the looks of the show. So, you know, it's hard being looks, really. That, that's still to be determined with Jay. So um, so you started with Jackson Kayak in 2011, right? Uh, it's kind of, well, EJ and I have known each other since the 90s. Um, we started a project called World Kayak back then. Um, you know, the Ottawa River and the Whitewater World is where everybody kind of gathers at least once a year. So everybody who's, who's who paddles intermediate to advanced usually ends up on the Ottawa. So I've known EJ for a while. When he started Jackson, I just came in, came in in the background as kind of a consultant and made it official um, 2000, between 2007 and 11 somewhere where when my work got to a point where it's full time. OK, I got you. I got you. So here's a here's one question that I came up with. I always see you called Indiana James. Mm. Where where does that come from? Uh, that's another Jackson story. Uh, <laughs> by the way, the whole, the way I'm getting over this whole Jackson kayak to Jackson adventures is, uh, everything's Jackson. So, you sure. know, I, you know, even our coolers are no longer Orion coolers as a corporation, it's Jackson. And the Orion is basically the, the brand of the product's name. So, uh, you know, I think Jackson kayak will stay around and it's it, everything. Jackson is, is kind of how we're consolidating it. Uh, Indiana James was a Jackson thing. Uh, went to Mexico. Uh, the state of Veracruz asked us to go and tape um, a whole bunch of adventure on all sorts of waterways from fishing. We had the, I think it was the year the CUDA 14 came out. So it's pretty, pretty new to, uh, um, to fishing, but maybe two years in. And we had a, our touring boats and we had our whitewater boats. And the Veracruz, state of Veracruz was an incredible place to kind of hang out. Uh, a lot of the guys, I do whitewater fishing and, and touring, so I was in a lot of the shoots, but some of the class four plus five stuff, I, I was basically a pack rat. Okay. So uh, we had a camera guy, um, oh boy, his name escapes me now, uh, a really great photographer, and he needed help carrying all his gear. So I donned my my Indiana James hat, and I, I had a big, huge backpack, and I was hucking it through the jungles. I mean, we were hanging off trees and, and literally, literally swinging across ravines <laughs> and stuff like that. And at one point they started, I, I, I'm kind of a goofy guy. So the Nick Troutman started taping little mini episodes and uh, I was given the moniker Indiana James. And by the end of the trip, I had a, I don't know if you can see behind me, there's a yeah. sketch, there's a yep. sketch there that was done in a little market in, in, uh, in Mexico. And uh, so the rest is history. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you actually got your start uh, in the kayaking world doing whitewater, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. We had, um, I set up on the Ottawa River. We're, we're only 45 minutes away here from uh, arguably one of the best and easiest whitewater rivers to learn on. Um, okay. Ottawa River. So I had a kayak school called Liquid Skills. Uh, still runs. Uh, um, Joey Hitchens and the, the Hitchin family runs that out of on the Ottawa River, and that's where basically that and trips that we organized in Chile and Ecuador and Peru and stuff like that uh, for many years. Okay, very cool. What do you think the craziest whitewater run you've ever done? Uh, I had, I'd have to say the Futalefu in Chile. Um, 
crazy for me anyway. Uh, uh, it's a, I'm used to big water. Ottawa River gets pretty big in the spring, but I hadn't done it in many years. And when we opened up this river in Chile, um, uh, there's a couple of rapids near 20, 30 foot standing waves that are kind of intimidating. All easy at the end, you know, once you blow through them, you felt like, oh, okay, but standing atop them is, is kind of, especially this one section called Mundaka where you, you just lost in the middle of it. And that was pretty, pretty exciting. Very cool. And you, uh, what is World Kayak and how long you've have you been running that? That's kind of like a paddle school, right, for whitewater? Uh, well, it was, uh, it was and is a, kind of an initiative to help grow the sport of whitewater kayaking. And one of the things, uh, for example, that's very difficult in a region is to get sponsors to create a local festival, you know, to do, to host uh, a little throwdown or a little rodeo for freestyle is, is usually two or three people looking for sponsors, setting up venues and all that kind of stuff. So what we did to make organization of these events really easy is uh, uh, we have Colin Kemp who works for Jackson Kayak and myself and uh, a growing number of ambassadors started working towards create, creating events in a, in a box basically. So okay. we would literally go out at the beginning of the year, Colin would anyway, and get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sponsorship, you know, from uh, life jackets to sandals, and they would all be delivered to his house. And then we would package them and he would package them. I say we, <laughs> uh, he would package <laughs> them and he would send them off to, you know, 80 different, 40 different regions for about, you know, we did a hundred and a few years back, we did 160 world kayak events in, in 40 different regions. So wow. just to make it a little easier on the, or in the organizers, um, uh, uh, it just got, uh, got pretty busy again, 40, 40 ambassadors representing us and stuff like that. So, uh, the whole idea was to get more people into whitewater kayaking. Very cool. Mm. Very cool. So um, we'll kind of transition here. So have you always been a fisherman, being that you live in Canada? I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing up there. Uh, next just like next to hockey. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, you got hockey and then you got fishing for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 so just like you guys, just like in the U.S., uh, fishing is a really popular pastime. I mean, anywhere there's a lake, there's folks with fishing rods in hand and and, you know, we're blessed here in Canada. We've got the Trans-Canada that goes between major cities and everything north of that is blue. Yeah, yeah we have, right. we have, and south for that matter. Around me here is probably more water than land. Uh, and that's, yeah. that's not an exaggeration. That's probably a reality. Um, uh, so my mom was, I was born in Newfoundland. So when I was a kid, my f fishing kind of started off of a dock. I actually used... I used worms until I ran out of the worms and then I used <laughs> cigarette butts and we used, my brother and I used to pull in sunfish and we'd, we'd count, you know, how many, <laughs> how many sunfish you get. So that was, I think where I got hooked, but then my uncle Bill got me into fly fishing in Newfoundland. Uh, you know, I was, there's a bucket list. Uh, one of the bucket list fish for fly fishing is the Atlantic salmon. And I caught my first at four. Oh, so, wow. um, I'm, uh, so I'm surrounded by water. My dad was senior engineer for Environment Canada, so I was working towards saving rivers from water pollution and stuff like that. So we're always always in and around water uh, my whole life. So fishing was a big part of that. Very cool. So d if you had the choice, would you go with conventional fishing or fly fishing? I mean, which one's your favorite? Or is it a mix of the two? It's a mix of the two, and it's really it's about the day. You know, some days I'll wake up and there's a – you know, the good bit of wind, you know, I went to Sweden and uh, Gunnar and all those guys that are on the JK team out there, they have hurricane force winds and they have no problem throwing flies in that. And I'm like, why would I have to when Ow. I got a swim bait? <laughs> like, I could yeah. throw. So, you know, it's not, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm, I definitely don't lean either way, but I'll, I'll do both. You know, I'll always have a, a fly rod when I go musky fishing on the lake up here and stuff like that. So, um, so is uh is musky your favorite favorite species to target then, or is it just whatever's biting that day? Um, it is the only species I target really. You know, okay. and, in a sense that when I go out bass fishing, I'll well fish for any and all kind of bass, and if I catch a pike, which you do a lot up here, you know, sure, um, you're 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 fishing. You know, so most of the days I'm just going out fishing. Usually, cast catch a lot of bass up here and pike. 
Um, but I'd say once a month at least, I'm going musky fishing. Very and that's, cool. You know, that's you know I I make sure that you know we we're blessed again. We have the Gananoque an hour and a half from here, which plays host to one of the you know the uh, one of the uh, historic world records, and the other one is Hayward, Wisconsin. There's another one yeah. that's claimed from Hayward, and so they've they've always been this legendary fight yeah. between the two towns. <laughs> so that's 45 minutes away. I've yeah. got Ottawa River maybe 10 minutes away, which where I catch, you know, everything, almost everything over 50, uh, not everything, but some of my, the bigger ones are out of the Ottawa. And then we have the Madawaska and again, only 20, 30 minutes away from me, some more tiger muskie and muskie in there. We're just surrounded the St. Lawrence Avenue. You know, I go there every once in a while too. And there's some big giants there too. So I'm surrounded. Sounds um, like to toothy critter country up there. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in 2012, you won the Musky Fly Fishing World Championship. Mm -hmm. That's that's an accomplishment. Um, I know there's a there's a guy uh, in northern Wisconsin. Speaking of the Hayward area, Brad Bowen, he's mm -hmm. uh, huge into that, and that's how I found out about uh, fly fishing for muskies, actually. Sure. So. Uh, yeah. No, that was that was. Um, I think it was a uh, that was the first year. I think they hosted it. I'm not sure. I think they did a second year and it didn't go very much farther. Um, I think politics were involved. Sure. Um, I'd say there was, we, we, it was in Tennessee and we got this little call and I'd been musky fishing by then for about 10 years. Um, rarely on the fly actually back okay. then. Okay. You know, I, I was the guy throwing the big, huge treble hook plugs and stuff like that. And sure. Uh, you know, so I used to have this muscle on my arm just from throwing those things, and, uh, yeah. you know, the big kaploosh, <laughs> that kind of thing. So uh, this is kind of foreign to me, but Jackson, someone from Jackson gave me a call and I said, and I said, some local fly fishing musky thing wants to, you know, get a sponsorship. So I said, well, I'll give him a boat. So I, I said, so we gave him a Kusa to to the winner <laughs> ironically oh, cool. uh, uh <laughs> actually that's not true it was for fundraising so they put the coos up for bids to fundraise at the tournament um so i i hadn't been fly fishing in years i don't think since my my uncle died um so i went up they gave us two spots so myself and another teammate uh, went and we went to the lake and i fly fish a not fly fish i fish a, a bit with jace and the gang up around the, the factory in sparta okay. which is where the tournament was and uh pulled onto the water that day with about 150 200 fly fishermen and i had a five weight fly rod if if you know fly fishing that's a that's a yeah, trout yeah. rod oh, that's yeah, basically yeah. a trout rod <laughs> yeah and oh, yeah. uh uh the uh our, the uh, folks from uh Vermont fly guys gave me a whole bunch of flies just out of the blue, just said, here, take these and try these out. And I'm like, all right. I put a, a makeshift 40 pound fluorocarbon leader on my, with no tapering at all, nothing. <laughs> right. Just tied it right on. And I went out and I written, as soon as I heard where everybody was going, I'm like, those fish aren't there. They're all up <laughs> in the river. So I just said, okay, sure. just put me in on the river. And there's probably maybe, I only saw maybe one or two other boats that day. I was the only one in a kayak. And uh, I brought in a uh, couple of muskie. The biggest one took the took the event, and it was fun. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so when you're off the water, you're a hockey player. You're you're a rocker. You got a I band playing playing the bass. What what's the name of the band? Uh, we used to call it. We used to be called the Bastards. Uh, okay. <laughs> then we started playing. Uh, we we're uh, we have. At the time, we had two members of our, our band who were autistic. And uh, so we started getting gigs at really, you know, nice community halls and, you know, church halls and stuff like that. Uh, at least it started that way. So we were like, we should probably change our name. Um, so now we're the Sons of Ned. Uh, sons of Ned. So the Bastards, Bastards Sons of Star Ned Stark is kind of where it all came from. One of our guys is a Game of Thrones fan. So uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, we whittled it down to the suns. So there we go. I, I was wondering if it was uh, in relation to the Ned rig, but that answers the question. No, I think I'm the only fisherman in the gang. I'm like, okay. I try, but nobody's got the patience. They just want to rock and roll. Yeah. So you're still playing hockey, correct? I am. I did until Sunday. I got squeezed into the boards. It was a nothing 
nothing moment, but I, I, my entire rib cage went pop. So I have two different Ooh. ribs right now. So I'm, I'm a little, uh, a little hung up, but yeah, uh, we have, uh, a league here in, uh, the, just the town next to us and we play four nights a week. So, um, very cool. See hockey player. Plus my son's it, hockey too. Uh, you're in the audio Ottawa area still, correct? Yep. I'm just yeah. west of Ottawa in a little town called Carlton Place. So. Okay. Yeah, my wife's cousin lives up there, and he, he kind of does the same thing. He, he's a goalie. Uh, uh, I'm curious. A- after this, we'll talk. Maybe you know okay. each other. <laughs> but um, um, how often are you down at the factory at Jackson? It varies, uh, but on average, four times a year. Um, you know, we'll have uh, – pro- product meetings, some executive meetings, someone would be coming in to visit the factory and, or, and we do film shoots as well down there. So, uh, more often than not, uh, four times a year. Very cool. Very cool. Um, we'll finish off this section with a quote. It's not how well you do. It's how good you look. <laughs> <laughs> Any comment? Uh, that's something I've been throwing around for years. I don't even know where it came from. Um, it's kind of one of those quotes that starts off when you're saying it to someone, it starts off, you know, with a little pressure to do well. Sure. And it ends with, well, if you can't do well, you might as well look good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and this, uh, in today's day and age, uh, sometimes that's all that counts. So it, it works well either way. Uh, totally, totally. That's agree. why I have to do well. Yeah, (laughs) I found it. I found it uh, as I was looking through your Facebook profile and I'm like, this is genius. I love it. So had to bring it up. So um, let's jump into Jackson Adventures. So there's a lot of questions. I mean, obviously, we've had a lot of big announcements come out this past week in the kayak Mm -hmm. community. Um, But more importantly, Jackson Adventures, you know, Jackson Kayak was formed in 2003 or 16 years later, mm. why, why rebrand so late in the game? Um, it's more about, uh, it, there's a whole, you know, tiered system, tiered answer to that question. And one of the, one, you know, the first one is simplicity. Um, uh, when we struck out on, you know, the Orion coolers kind of path, uh, it split accounting it's split marketing we have two websites we have two you know series of promotional campaigns we have two everything you know and uh that was very difficult um and it came at a time where you know our industry in total sales last year and total you know went down you know 35 percent you know so it, it you know when you're uh, and that's what you're seeing the activity now. I'm, you know, I can't speak for the other companies, but uh, it's it's definitely affected the bottom lines everywhere. And when bottom lines start to get affected, then that's where you start going, okay, what can we con- consolidate to make things smarter on the on the business side? Sure. Okay, do we do we do need do we need two sets of books? Do we need two websites? You know, at fifteen thousand a year you know, just for hosting, you know, that kind right. of thing. So that, that's kind of where it, it started a little bit. But also it's uh, as we as you spin out into these different verticals, you start getting distracted from what you started with in the first place. And sure. uh, what we started with in the first place was the Jackson family and the way they were able to take, uh, you know, the factory team around them and then the market or place around the team and, and everybody kind of in concentric circles became part of a, a pretty big family and a pretty, pretty cool movement community. Um, and with the different verticals that split, you know, there was no, you know, all of a sudden there was no cohesiveness through it all. There's no easy t- channel to communicate through and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is kind of a, a moment in time for a good moment in time for us to kind of bring it back into the family um, and, and put the Jackson Adventures logo on it. I got you. I got you. So with that being said, are Jackson kayaks going to be called Jackson Adventures now? Um, I know you touched on Jackson coolers will still be what Jackson Orion coolers. I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes from is, you know, how how are these different brands that all fall under the Jackson umbrella going to be named, so to speak? Well, at the end of the day for kayaks is easy because they're still kayaks from Jackson. 
So okay. having having a Jackson kayak on the side of a boat isn't isn't not isn't something we're in a rush to change. You know, sure. having an Orion Coolers logo and Orion logo. That's the beauty of it. Is it, 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 it's still a brand in and it's of self. It's more the organization and, and the structuring of the promotions around it that we're we're changing up a bit. Uh, the big changes. Uh, if, if you're on our website is obviously the fact that there's now a buy now button next to kayaks, Sure, which is super new, um, uh, and done in a way with our dealers that is second, uh, second to none and very unique. So, um, uh, they need to keep, they need us to have, hold on to those names of those brands. They've been around for a long while. We're not getting rid of them. They're just pr- more product brands than, than corporate brands. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so how long has this kind of been in the works in the background? I mean, when, when was the idea conceived and how long have you guys been, you know, uh, at the sharpening stone with this? Uh, well, in my background, I, I registered the domain Jackson outdoors four years ago. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's been a conversation for a while. Um, um, but I think it took, kind of some serious uh, back and forth to bring our bring everybody who's really responsible for Jackson to the table. Um, again, a lot of it has to, a lot of the delay, if you will, and anything moving fast forward is is how busy we are. Sure. You know, sure. We, we've you know, the first few years of fishing, especially we grew 600 percent or, you know, and it yeah. everything kind of grew and everything was still. And then Orion came in and we're, you know, Blue Sky Boat Works and everything's compounded on each other and it was just more of a matter of time of, of finding a time to sit down and go okay let's plan this out and look are we going to do this you know let's plan this out it's got to be rolled out properly and all that kind of stuff so that's been a long conversation sure um, we brought a group in called genesis which is a, a, a marketing uh a marketing group who we've we've got direct connects with over the years through some of our our executive and uh they sat down with us and they're just like this is this is what we think, and you know we spent the whole couple of days nodding, going, yeah, okay, that sounds great. <laughs> and I <laughs> right, could right. spend the whole days going, oh, this is oh, this is a James thing, okay, James. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two days of James make work task management uh, happened after that. So um, luckily, I've got a great marketing team who uh, who were just kind of stoked by this whole project. And uh, well, you guys saw the the effects from the when we started releasing to the team, and then we did that adventure is coming routine. That was just an off the cuff, you know, I, I think I went to Will or Emily and said, hey, why don't we ask the team to just put this Adventure is Coming logo on some yeah. photos and sh- share their own adventures. And man, that took a life of its own. Then, of course, Luther, Luther comes out with the big adventures project. <laughs> and I yeah. like, I'm like, well, we just we just marketed for him for like two weeks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody had, everybody had an adventure going on last week. You know, yeah. it's. Uh, it is what it is, but I mean, I think it was cool. I, like you said, um, you know, I, I'd open my Facebook feed and it was just picture after picture after picture of adventure is coming and it, and it wasn't all the same and it wasn't just pictures of kayaks. You know, I know, uh, like Aaron Steiger had, a, a an image. I think he was out hiking with his son. Uh, yep. um, there was somebody else had a picture of a gator with just the eyes coming out of the water. Gee, I wonder if that's Chris Funk. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that was Chris Funk. Yeah, yeah. I know Gene Wilson had some, some pictures of, uh, you know, a, a, a lily pad flower, you know, out in the water and stuff like that. That's, so. that's kind of the, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, uh, where I found our marketing and our message was splitting too many different directions because of the split brands. Sure. You know, we were, we should have always been catering to, those who went hiking and camping with their kids because we have coolers we have accessories and all sorts of stuff now that that's you know serve those markets uh we continue to work on, on ideas that are becoming out in 2020 2021 that serve markets off of the water you know so uh where we were just gonna we we spent most of our life sharing stories about whitewater and, and on the water fishing well now this, our stories can be grander you know that it, it's important to get kids into outdoors and and kids into the right uh products and boats and stuff like that so that's that story can't be lost and it was kind of lost i think and uh, i think this is a way for us 
to kind of come back to again our roots which is family and getting people outdoors um absolutely and that's exactly what the team represented the last two weeks which was phenomenal um, absolutely man i i agree with that and i i love that idea you know getting getting kids involved and and getting families back together in the outdoors you know it's I've talked about it on the podcast before too many times, you know, you, you, you go out in a public or you're at a restaurant and you, you look over at a table and the whole family has their head buried in <laughs> the iPhone, you know, and it's almost uh, like sometimes they're texting across the table from each other instead of having a normal conversation, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's sad, but you know, with our adventures that, that, you know, brings that family life that more, um, you know, socializing so to speak among amongst friends and family and things like that and i think jackson does a great job of promoting that for sure and you know especially going back to the inception of jackson where you know ej went out on a whim he was told he was crazy because he wanted to design a kid's whitewater boat mm -hmm. and then look look at what's been created all from that sure. one first kid's boat so yeah. it's kind of cool like you said to see it come full circle and uh come around almost back to the beginning but still expanding on that so yeah. i think i think the 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 marketing environment in the last few years have been so focused on and we've been guilty of it too you know so focused on market share and things like that and not so much focused for example on moving kayak fishing or exposing kayak fishing to the, the fishing the general fishing market sure you know, the reality is there's there's a lot more people out there who should be stepping onto boats kayaks uh, that we offer uh, to get into kayak into into fishing in a more intimate setting you know that we offer versus a bass boat or a dock you know so sure sure uh, we, we've lost i think as an industry we've kind of lost lost sight of that and uh, i think this this is a good actually a big part of the conversation we had forming jackson adventures is that let's let's focus on just getting people into our family or our community and uh the rest will just you know pay its way yeah, I mean, I get that all the time. You know, it's, you know, I work part time for a kayak shop here locally, and we get folks that come in and they're like, oh, I was, you know, on the internet or Facebook or something like that. And I saw some guy fishing out of a kayak and I started doing a little research, came in, found you guys, and, you know, we're, we're talking to folks and getting them involved. And it's cool because, you know, like you said, you know, a lot of folks think they got to spend tons of money to get in a huge bass boat to get off the bank and and off the shore and um it's cool to kind of kind of see that option being brought to you know the average folk so to speak yep. so yep. very cool man so um you know getting into to to the retailers and the consumer end of things you know you mentioned the buy it now button online um you guys have always been focused on you know small mom and pop shops mm -hmm. uh, you know dealers and, um, you know, what, what does this mean? You know, um, I mean, I know what it means, but, um, for the folks listening, you know, um, obviously, yeah, you can go on Jackson adventures. Now you can, p uh, click a button to buy your boat, but what does that mean for the retailer, so to speak? So the, the programs we have with the retailers are still in place, you know, and the, and the same process of, of representing our products, you know, during, from, uh, ICAST to PSR, Paddle Sports Retailer, it's still in place. We're still, you know, dealers will still want inventory on the floor because they're going to get the best advantage in our system uh, having boats on, on on site. You know, the problem has always been, do they have the right colors? It's kind of sure. two layers to it. One, Jackson JacksonKayak.com beforehand got upwards of 300,000 unique visitors a month. Sure. And that's a massive marketing engine for all of our products and all of our dealers. So obviously, the number three most visited portion of our site has always been the find a dealer page. And I don't okay. think that's going to change a lot. Um, but that now what we're able to do is capture that sale almost right up front. You know, uh, get 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 the consumer in a position where, oh, OK, there, there's no blink factor. Um, I want to order a boat. I can order a boat. And and immediately the dealer gets notified that there's a boat order uh, from their store. If they don't have the color, we ship that color to the dealer. Um, and if they don't carry that boat, we still ship that boat through the dealer to the consumer. And even if we ship the, the boat direct to consumer, the dealer still get a, gets, a, gets a margin on it. So um, okay. it, it's set up in a pretty exciting way. Um, and it's done, you know, 
again with the long conversations with our dealers and uh, uh, we've we've really worked the system through its paces in regards to how um, how the dealer benefits from it and, and and the math is pretty interesting in the sense that even though they don't carry the boat they're still going to get benefit from it which is kind of huge yeah that is huge I know so so from from working on that retail side right that's that's always been a struggle from from talking to a shop owner and and things like that is you know what colors do we order because right now I'm, I'm the fishing guy right these right. guys are the wreck paddlers and stuff like that so you know it's like well what color should we order uh should we order this model or that model you know so i make i think that makes it super unique and easier on the dealers um obviously they're going to order in some stock but if because they don't have boat A and color B, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to lose a sale. So yeah, I think that's, that, that's huge from yeah. a, from, from a dealer standpoint, that is a huge thing. Yeah. And now the, crazy, that, the, the crazy thing about the idea of going all direct and, and some companies have done that in, sure. in, in the whitewater side, especially. And the, re the reality is People still need to demo boats. They still need to go to go to a place and sit, stand next to a product and get the retailer explaining to them why this product is going to fit their needs versus another product and that kind of thing. There's, there's, I, for me, it was kind of unconscionable, if you will, to think that there was any way to cut a dealer out. You can't. Sure. It just doesn't sure. make any sense, especially with this, the, 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 the momentous decision that needs to happen to right, to right, right, fishing kayak. So. Uh, well, and not only that, right? So, you know, say, say dealer A doesn't have said boat, but they got a, a stock order coming in and then, you know, Joe Smith orders a boat that can get piggybacked on. So now they're saving a little bit of shipping. Is that how that's going to work? It's free shipping to a dealer. Oh, look at that. Look <laughs> at that. Jackson is stepping up the game. I love it. I love yeah. it. So, we, I mean... Uh, obviously, I mean, it's a whole plethora of things when it comes to shipping. If you're shipping to a private residence, you get dinged, you know, and if it's a commercial yeah. residence, it's a little bit better, but if you're shipping sure. with another shipment, it's even better. So, uh, this is going to be really heavy on our customer service. Uh, we have Roxanne who's now taken over customer service, but a year now, I guess she's been around and this is going to be big. You know, we, you know, we're processing almost every boat order through a dealer. So we're communicating with the dealer at every order. Um, uh, you know, we're going to automate some of that, but okay. the reality is we're taking a huge hit, uh, when it comes to managing, handshaking the, you know, the, from the buy now moment to through to when the dealer, you know, some of our dealers are going to be able to offer what we call white glove service delivering, hand delivering to, to the, uh, to the consumer, not all, but some. So sure. there's a whole range of, of stuff happening in the background that is, that uh, we think will take the, the level of customer service we're really used to delivering and bringing it right down to when, when and how people are getting, getting boats, which is cool. Well, I think it's a win-win for everybody, not only Jackson, but the consumer and the retailer. And and I love it. I mean, it's it's genius. Um, so, I mean, also with that being said, you guys uh, are rolling out two as well, uh, financing options with mm -hmm. some, some participating dealers, not all, or how's that all going to work? Three, actually. So uh, there's, there's a financing uh, partnership we just signed with Sheffield. Um, okay. and you're a bit, you've been in the retail industry, so you may have heard of them. Uh, yep. I think that if I'm not mistaken, they're really big in the mar Marine side. Uh, so when we got into the blue sky boat world, uh, a lot of marinas are picking up our blue skies. So, yeah. uh, we kind of got wind of that and we just, uh, we're just finalizing something with them. I think it's already finalized. So some dealers already have it in place. Okay. Um, uh, I'm I'm not sure how it works, but I, I'm guessing it's, you know, as long as the Jackson line is accepted underneath the, you know, underneath the umbrella of that, that uh, in dealer financing program, then it's, it's good to go. And I mean, we've been accepted. So that's the first one. We'll get more information on that and roll that out uh, sooner or later. Not all dealers will have that just participating okay. dealers. Okay. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to be rolling out uh, two 
online financing, one via your credit card and the other one using uh, Kalarna, which is a, a popular online financing uh, um, institute and system. We're just working out percentages and stuff like that, uh, signing dot alliance. Uh, we had to have an active website, so we're waiting for that to happen, and that happened last week, so off we go. So that those announcements should come fairly quick, um, but I'll give everybody an opportunity to take advantage of financing, both for online purchases and in-store purchase. That's very cool, man. That is very cool. Yeah, I know. I mean, that that's that's one common question, you know. It's it's like, oh, you know, I have folks coming in looking at the blue sky. I, I mean, I fish out of a blue sky. <laughs> um you know well, i don't know if i have that money and you know do you guys do financing that's always a question that's brought up so i think it's cool that that option is being brought to the kayak world especially you know some of these fishing kayaks they can get fairly mm -hmm. expensive so it'll be cool uh, i dig it i dig it so um you guys i so the the Jackson Adventures rolled out, and I know there there was a, a a common thing like so. This is all just a website, right? And obviously, this goes well beyond than just making a new website. Mm -hmm. um, so, what are some of the cool new features on the website? I know you guys are doing um, different um, channels on the website yep. uh, for whitewater fishing, exploration, things like that. What's what's that going to look like? Well, step back and this, so the 60,000 foot view, first of all, the only comments I see that are saying those things is probably the Kayak Bass Nation folks. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Kayak Bass Nation. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Oh, everybody's doing well. yeah. <laughs> I call it the uh, Christine Fisher Club. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We've got a big fan club there for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a, it's a fun, groovy place. I, I, I actually start my days there. I usually, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of fun to interact and uh, yeah, I hear talk to and it's like, like the hockey hockey change room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. That's the sky description. Uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, on the outside, obviously. Um, uh, we've had a website that's been pretty busy, um, sure. uh, mostly because we content market. And, you know, a lot of people have our website as their default browser, mostly because we have five new articles a day. Yeah, and right. it's a good place to go see what's new. The green race results are already up, and lots of videos, for example, on the whitewater side. So people are looking for that. Uh, the problem has been trying to share space between all the disciplines. You know, the whitewater team is really busy. The fishing team is really busy and growing. Uh, we have an exploration and an outdoors, you know, world that's growing, and the stories are coming from Damon and Orion, and and it's just kind of too spread out to be on only one screen. Sure. Uh, and too voluminous for that matter. So, uh, and the team's been asking for it for about five years. So I just like the idea of doing a new website it, within the last five years was like, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. So uh, finally we've, we've, so the main screen is going to be basically our, what I like to call the national geo content. We're going to have great videos, great stories, you know, the top stuff, you know, the, the stuff that really inspires you to take your own outdoor lifestyle to that next level where we've got a stronger focus on the products themselves. People are like, okay, these are great stories, but what do you guys sell? You know, right, 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 <laughs> that right. kind of thing. So we're, we've changed that and made sure that a lot of those questions are answered. And like I said, the, the quality and the place where we are as a corporation is reflected. Um, we're not just a blog spot anymore. We're, you know, sure. we're starting to think about things and messaging and all that kind of good stuff, which is uh, something uh, we like to do. Um, and then the channels themselves, we have a whitewater channel. Uh, it's going to have, if you go there, it's on under the explore section, you'll see that it's uh, everything to do with whitewater uh, from, you know, principal stories to I have seg seg segregated into disciplines. So you have a freestyle, um, uh, creaking, expedition, and that stuff. And then there's a column for instructional posts. So all the instructional posts Great. that have been going through the system from our team members, you know me, I, I, I always ask for more instructional stuff than sure. story stuff. Sure. Uh, so we have a lot of instruction. And then, of course, our video gallery per discipline. Uh, in fishing, uh, we're going to start moving towards, you know, splitting content up between bass fishing and you know redfish fishing and we're, we're we'll, we'll start collecting stories specific to sectors of fishing and and touch on lots of tips within those sectors as well um and make it make it a, an easier to navigate resource for people um than it has been 
Well, I dig it because, I mean, that's one thing when, uh, you know, you go in and look, there, there's, you know, guys are posting stories, yeah, about going out fishing. Uh, and I'm just speaking from the fishing side. I won't lie. I don't pay too much attention to the whitewater side um, just because I think I'm too big and I'd sink a whitewater kayak if I got in one. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, you got guys posting up about their, their trips out on, you know, fishing tournament recaps. Mm. Um, the one thing that I always see is, you know, guys are doing, uh, rig setups, yep. you know, so you always get those questions from newer folks that are new to our sport and, uh, you know, how do I rig this up or how do I do that? And you can reference them to a blog on the Jackson kayak site, which is, which is cool. Yep. Plus you guys carry some of those accessories and things like that. So, I mean, it's a win-win all around. Yeah. Um, but I, I went through and I looked at the new layout and like you said, very much more organized than it was kind of before. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was some organization before, but I think it's, it's even more well laid out um, this time around than the first time for sure. Yeah. We, we also had to accommodate for mobile. Uh, <laughs> our mobile numbers went from, I think when we started the first version of that, that version of the website three or four years ago, maybe five years ago, uh, we only had about 10% mobile. Yeah. Now, you know, I like Everything's to say, kids these days and they're flipping their <laughs> thumb through things, you know, sure. Uh, they have the one active thumb, you know, yeah. that's, that's, by the way, I'm going to release the, the 2022 boat is going to be a thumb drive. <laughs> you're going from pedal drive to thumb drive i just, like it they just sit there and go like that it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be <laughs> that way the kids can use it you know because sure. they don't have to do it with their hands so they're like <laughs> so um but uh, so mo it's very mobile friendly um um uh, that that changes the game you know in the old days you didn't want to see scrolling pages <laughs> <laughs> yeah right 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 that's all we do is like <laughs> yep. yeah so yeah lots of fun um, i dig it i dig it so what's what's still to come what what all can we expect uh we have i don't know <laughs> yeah we have it <laughs> we we do have a, another pretty groundbreaking program so the, the obvious ones that that is next is going to be the way we're going to be releasing our 2020 products so sure. we have the uh, um, FD3D. So we have the new flex drive coming out very shortly. We have the E drive. Yes, it's finally ready. Um, it's coming out. Uh, we just had to do work on the configuration. We're this this E drive is going to be compatible with both lithium and uh, lead acid. Yeah. Um, so uh, we just made it compatible basically. Uh, so that's, that's done. It was tested. It's doing great. We just have our first orders coming in. Uh, it's a third party who's building it. So uh, we played the waiting game a little bit. And then we have uh, our Byte FD, which is going to basically, you know, be kind of uh, main headline, the, the launch of a new Byte family of boats. So that's exciting. Uh, then we have the uh uh, Kilroy HD and the UPIC, uh, yeah. those three boats are very close to, to they're heading out the door to dealers as we speak and will be announced, announcing very shortly when they're going to be ready for purchase. So uh, we have exciting rollouts in the product side, obviously. And then we have one more, if you think by dealer direct, which is what I'm calling it, is exciting. Uh, this one is going to be even more ground moving than Okay. The, you know, but I can't tell you unless, you know, swore to secrecy and we can't replay this on public. So <laughs> yeah. probably, we'll hold uh, off. We'll, yeah. we'll talk. We'll talk. But that's, that's the, <laughs> the last one. The last one not so mentioned is is going to be kind of massive. So. Uh, so I heard you um, talk about this briefly uh, uh, on uh, Jim Salmon's podcast, the bite family. So there's going to be three different bites. Um, I've heard you dub the. Uh, Byte FD is the go kart of the kayak world. That's fun. Uh, I don't know how if that was released this year, correct? Sorry, you cut out there. Oh, sorry about that, man. Um, so the Byte family, you're going to have um, the Byte FD, mm -hmm. which I've heard you dub the uh, go kart of the kayak world, um, the Byte Angler, and then just the standard 
stock bite that was the addition that came out this year, except you guys are upgrading the seat on that, right? Yeah, the seat's upgraded. There's a couple of other things. Uh, a couple of things that we obviously wanted to do different from the first bite release was, you know, number one was how come this is a, you know, in the pastel blue colors sure, instead of sure, the, sure. The fishing colors. So we're like, okay, so we did that. Uh, so the bite angler is going to be the same price as the first bite. So that's kind of cool. And the angler is going to have a few more bells and whistles. Um, it's got, we have a new seat. Uh, the seat back was a little uncomfortable. So we changed that. We changed the way the seat's being affixed to the, to a little bit with those, the little, little grips, I call them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there's going to be some, a couple of features for fishing on it as well. Um, the FD is uh, arguably the coolest pedal craft I've ever been in. You know, Very I'm not cool. a big pedaling fan, as you, you probably noticed yeah. from most of my posts. I don't pedal too much. Um, I got to have something to do with my hands. Everybody's like, yeah. you should be fishing. I'm like, eh. <laughs> you know, paddling is a big part of what I do. So, um, sure. but uh, that drive, we were at uh, Palace Sports Retailer and the demo day was in a whitewater park. Yeah. And every one of our dealers who got on that thing came out, of, you know, they got on the thing. They had to kind of look in their face like, all right, here we go. And they got adjusted their seat, you know. Well, the seat's comfortable, and then they started pedaling, and they're like, ah. And then <laughs> it's just like, then they do, there wasn't a lot of, you know, see, I'd say 95% of the pedal drives were like doing the three point turn to make the sure. turn around because it was super narrow channels. And this thing just went, yeah. turned around. You know, we're next week, we're releasing the, um, the, the, bl the rudder. Okay. Uh, we, we had, uh, had a little little delay in that but uh it's going to be like 28 bucks and uh it's an awesome addition to the fd so that's another new release coming out but uh that bite fd dude that's fun um uh, yeah. we're filming with a bunch of flw boys and in, in cat mac in florida this week and i got a ping from one of them saying oh, we're doing they're doing little <laughs> races they're like one-on-one -on -one races and they're ripping around the bays and stuff like that it's it's a pretty fun little boat I've heard nothing but good things about it, and I can't wait to uh, get behind the pedals of it for sure. Um, it, it just looks like a ton of fun. And I mean, it's a super light boat to begin with, but uh, and, and not only that, but maneuverable, like you were touching on. Um, well, Tony Tony Lee and the gang at, and the design crew uh, really worked on the bike to, for ease of paddling. So the, sure. the, tri the trim on it really enables the boat to track really well. Yeah, there's right, not right. a lot of boat touching the water. It's really high shines, uh, low low to the water, so the wind doesn't catch it. And the end of the day, it's probably one of our fastest boats to paddle. Um, and you add, you know, a pedal drive, especially the 3D, which is, you know, probably two thirds faster than what the the, the first edition is. Um, you've got a fast little sprinty boat there. Yeah, for sure. Well, I know talking to. Uh, uh, you know, one of our hosts here, Jay Randall, uh, he was down at um, the dealer summit uh, when when the bite was introduced. And he sh he came back home and he showed me a vid video of EJ standing and just paddling that thing. Mm -hmm. And it was just pretty impressive. And then not only that, but Jay had told a story where one of the guys went to step off the dock, a big guy went to step off the dock in onto the bite and Jay was kind of like, whoa, 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 be careful. And the guy stepped in it with ease, is super stable. Mm -hmm. um, so it, and I mean, I know just from a retail standpoint, you know, we've sold, I don't even know how many bites this year, but um, it, it's been a great, great introductory option. And now throwing the pedal drive in it, it's going to make it even that much better uh, uh, I, I, for, I for those it. that want it. You know? Yeah, I, I definitely love all these wide open boats. You know, that and the the Liska, I think, are probably our two best sellers, mostly because, uh, you know, the guy who's getting in or girl who's getting into kayak fishing for the first time, they have no idea where they want to put their gear. Sure. You know, they sure. they haven't figured it out. They see what their friends are doing. You know, the first thing they do is buy a milk crate usually or steal yeah. a milk crate. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And what, what, it, it's a, those boats are really good to kind of figure <laughs> your, your what your life is in a kayak is going to be like um that's kind of the cool thing about the u pick that i don't think we've messaged well enough that's something i noticed when i started playing with it 
um, you can be permanent with your setup. You know, and the bikes sure. and a lot of the other boats, you can kind of figure out where you want to put things. And then the next boat you get, you're going to make sure that your your thing is going to be there, right? Uh, right. Your your gear is going to be here and your whatever uh, with the UPIC and the way we're modularizing that and the Kilroy HD, all of a sudden you're like, you can use that as your entry entry boat, figure out where you want things to go from now on forever and then just put them there. Um, yeah. So that's um, that's kind of where we're, we went with those two boats. and But the bite was definitely a, a you know, like I said, it's those wide open spaces that I think a lot of us sure. kind of missed. You know, our, our boats started getting crowded with stuff that's right. You know, it hatches everywhere and things yeah. that were just like, oh, <laughs> do I have to use the hatch for that? Well, yeah, it was a, it was almost like a science, you know, rigging up your boat and where you wanted things. Now, with the flexibility of, you know, that wide open deck concept, it makes it a lot easier yeah. and a lot more adjustable. But yep. like you said, you can you can have those things affixed once you once you get it uh, well, we're, that's, set up. For next year, we're working on a lot of accessories for boats like the UPIC and even the bite and stuff like that. So, you know, looking for you know hard and soft hatches and things like that. You'll you'll see a, a bunch coming down the line. Very cool, interesting. So, you know, with these new boats coming out, I know a couple boats got discontinued, and I thought there was some talk. Are there going to be special runs of those discontinued boats? Yeah, it's it's very hard for us to discontinue boats. You know, we uh, there's some boats that got replaced by a newer version. You know, those sure, those sure. boats will always be, uh, you know, kind of gone forever. But uh, you know, boats like the Kraken, especially the kids' boats, uh, they're not on our website right now, mostly because the dealers don't have them. So sure. as soon as as soon as we're kind of ready to. Um, as soon as, as soon as we're kind of ready to to do these limited runs, we're going to be announcing them. Uh, we haven't quite figured out the program, but we're, we'll we we'll ne we'd never take kids' boats off the map. That's for sure. Yeah, um, right on. Right on. Uh, some of these unsung heroes too. So, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, as we're kind of winding down here, is there anything I I missed that you wanted to talk about in in relation to the new and exciting things coming out of Jackson? Well, I think I think um, uh, when it, when it, I guess the big biggest thing for me for Jackson Adventures is basically how this all kind of rolled out and you know who got involved and who who jumped in with two feet and I think you know starting with our dealers you know this is uh, you know anytime someone puts a buy now button on a manufacturer's site it, it's a wince factor for them and I think they've been really supportive uh, and uh, uh, more importantly a big part of the conversation. Um, and the end result is something that I think is going to change the industry um, okay. and 100% uh, uh, geared towards their benefits. Uh, so that's that's the first thing to, you know, for, for me anyways, to, to lend kudos to those guys who uh, who worked so hard on on working with guys like Doug and, uh, and the reps to, to figure all this out. Uh, this was um you know, also the the entire project was you know a handful of people really working quite literally 24 hours. The last week we were all up 24/7 uh, working on website testing and stuff like that. So uh, you know Emily Jackson, uh, Will Richardson, Bridget Howard, those names you guys all know. Yeah. Um, and behind we have a, a new guy, new fella, uh, Ryan Martin. Um, uh, so he's been helping us out a lot um, and been really good. Uh, so this is, you know, Dave, Doug, everybody at the at the at the head office that are kind of been our 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 back end, if you will. I guess we shouldn't call them back ends, but yeah, we can call them back ends. <laughs> um, there's been a you know a, quite a big kumbaya moment, if you will, for our corporation as we kind of relook at each other and just go, okay, where do we sit in this world? Kind of thing. It's been really kind of fun. Sure. And then to have the team you know, rally behind this whole project uh, like they did the last two weeks with the Adventurers Coming campaign. I, you know, you you can't say enough about everybody involved. So uh, uh, for me, it's like two thumbs up. So it's pretty exciting. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. So would you say that uh, a majority of the folks at Jackson Kayak all paddle? They all paddle? I, I was, someone asked me that the other day, I, and it was more who doesn't paddle. I mean, I don't think... You know, Dave. Yeah. We have Dave Olson, who's our CFO, who's not a not a kayaker. He's been kayaking, but he's not a kayaker. But I'd say everybody else does. 
everybody in management, nice. everybody in rep group, everybody involved in almost everything, even the marketing crew that we hired or paddlers, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, there's maybe one or two on the factory floor that don't, but a lot of times our factory folks are guys who are just like, Hey man, can I work for Jackson? You know, <laughs> All right, carry that. Well, <laughs> you know, so I bring that up because I think that's, that's one thing, you know, it's Jackson is a company that's, uh, by paddlers for paddlers, I guess you could mm-hmm. say, so to speak. So I think that's well, I hated that line. Um, I, I, it's just kind of an over overused thing, you know, fisher, fishermen for fishing, whatever. Yeah, it's, sure, 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 sure. But it, it's, uh, for me, it's, and I've had conversations. I mean, I sat down with a, uh, vice president of, a, of one of our top competitors, you know, and he, he's like, I don't know much about kayaking and, and, and that for me is it's never been, there's a lot of really good mainstay brands out there, including other kayak brands who have paddlers who are, and kai and fishermen who are actually managing making the decisions uh, and there's some that aren't but uh it's important to us it's i don't think i don't, I don't see how that would ever change sure sure well i mean I'm, I'm just saying that from the standpoint of you know the the folks that are you know marketing making producing selling these boats mm-hmm. are are all using them you know um, so it's, it says something that they can stand by that product that they make, design, sell, promote, so to speak. So, and if, and if ever we're late in delivering something, it's probably because we're paddling. Yeah. <laughs> so, so keep that in mind when you get a, when, you know, we're, we're, we've missed something or something I falls through the cracks, you know, I think that. that's the, uh, the most valid excuse there is out there. I mean. <laughs> I'll let that slide if that's the case. So uh, I, I should put that on my answer machine on my phone. Sorry, I couldn't come to the phone. Actually, Marty Cronin, our, our, our former VP of sales, that was his. Sorry, everybody. I can't get to the phone right now. I'm out paddling. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, you heard it first from the man uh, himself, uh, who is one of the brainchilds of, of the Jackson Adventures and um i'm super looking forward to what's coming in the future um you know james had kind of hinted on a few things so uh be on the lookout um definitely go check out the website you guys jacksonadventures.com um check out the explore page the new buy it now options everything just the the whole website is has been totally revamped and it's very well put together um, there, there's all kinds of great stuff in there for anybody, whether you're just a wreck paddler, fisherman, whitewater, wreck, whatever, you name it. Mm-hmm. If you got a paddle in your hand, it's for you. So go cool. give it a check out. And, uh, James, thank you so much for taking no, time out you. of your day. And, uh, we very much appreciate it. So with that being said, guys, until next time, tight lines and smooth paddling. <laughs>